Good morning. Good morning. This is truly the day that God has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Father Christopher Hofer, and it's great to be back with you this morning. Our service continues in our Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Genesis. The man said to Rebekah and her household, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. <clears throat> Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink. 
and who will say to me, Drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebekah coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, Please, let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelet on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord, the blessed, and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. <clears throat> now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right and or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahoi Roy and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there, walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Let us read portions of Psalm 45 responsibly by half verse. <coughs> Hear, O daughter, consider and listen closely. Forget your people and your father's house. The king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master, therefore do him honor. The people of Tyre are here with a gift. The rich among the people seek your favor. All glorious is the princess as she enters. Her gown is cloth of gold. An embroidered apparel she has brought to the king. After her right is followed in procession, with joy and gladness they are brought, and enter into the palace of the king. In place of fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them princes over all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, 
but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Was 
this humongous buffet of banquet goodness. There were turkeys and chickens and, and steaks and, and shrimp and vegetables and desserts and you name it, it was there. The man thought to himself, well, if this is hell, I'm going to have it pretty darn well. <laughs> and Satan looked at him and said, well, welcome, take a seat. Here's a seat prepared just for you. Why don't you sit and eat? And the man went and he grabbed his fork and he stopped. The fork was six feet long. And he realized that there was no way that he could get that fork and turn it and put it in his mouth. Man would be starving all of his eternal life. The other man died and he went to heaven. And not surprisingly, he was greeted by our Lord and our Savior with open and outstretched arms, with just this beaming face saying to the man, Welcome, welcome to your eternal home, good and faithful servant. The man smiles. He's with his Lord. What more could he ask for? And Jesus said to him, Let me show you, my son, where you will be enjoying your heavenly banquet, a banquet that will you'll feast on for eternity. And he goes into this room, and like in hell, there was the same thing. There was a table that was so long. It went on and on for an eternity with chairs on both sides, people on both sides there to eat and enjoy that banquet. The center of the banquet is filled with all the goodness you could possibly imagine. But there was a fork that was six feet long. And the man wondered how he was going to eat. And then he looked to his right, and he looked to his left, and he noticed that the neighbors across from each other were taking the forks, we're putting food on the fork and feeding the other. Feeding the other. Treating your neighbor as you would like yourself to be treated. In today's gospel, we Jesus saying that we're to take his yoke upon him. Now, yoke is a, if you're not familiar with animal uh, husbandry, you would not be familiar with yokes that go over the, the cow's head or the horse's head, and they're, they're big. It's sort of like a big horseshoe, but they're really heavy. But Jesus said to take that yoke upon you, that it is light. And by taking it upon us, we will find rest for our souls. What does that mean? For me, it means when we take on Christ in our lives, when we agree to be treating our neighbor as we would ourselves be wanted to be treated, that we take on a responsibility 
responsibility that was given to us and we made at our baptism to always care for the other. And that yoke, it can seem so difficult at times because we live in a world where there is so much suffering and so much sadness. You turn the news on and you think, not again, another mass shooting or another person or group of people that are being put down just for being individuals and trying to be themselves. But when we take on that yoke of Christ, we are able, my sisters and my brothers, to be able to be Christ for the other. We can feed them when they need that. We can wipe away their tears when tears come springing into their eyes. We can comfort them when they're mourning. We can visit them when they're in prison. We can provide beds for them when they have no place to lie their head at night. No matter where we are at, whether it be in church, in our home, in our workplace, in our school, out and about in the community. We, taking on the yoke of Christ, are given that opportunity to be there for the other, to take our six foot four, to go into the food, and to give the other the nourishment that they need. I don't know about you, but I would much rather be in heaven than the hell described in my story. It means a little extra work on our part, but the rewards are endless. My friends, grab your fork today no matter where you're at, feed your neighbor and find rest for your soul. Amen. stand as you're able. And in the Book of Common Prayer on page 358, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten Church. We acknowledge 
one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 4, found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the Church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially for our parishioners, our friends and family, and all who serve as first responders and in the armed forces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer thanks for the blessings you have given us, for the birthdays of Vicki and Daryl, for the anniversary of Warren and Alice. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit who live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. mercy on you, forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
continue with Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found in your prayer book on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for by watcher and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, join in our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, to feed on them in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
stand as you're able for our post communion prayer. And let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and with the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Are there any birthdays, anniversaries, prayers, and travel, any other special occasions to do? Pray for this week. Birthday? What day? Tuesday. Tuesday? Congratulations. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your service as she begins another year. We pray that the blessings that you bestow upon her each and every day might be bountiful and that she can serve others from her bounty. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Birthday? What day? Friday. Friday, you had to think about it? I did. <laughs> <laughs> We ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Anniversary. Well, he's right here. <laughs> How many years? 59. Congratulations. <laughs> you were only 14 when you got here. <laughs> Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the gift of marriage. And for the covenant that was made between these two people, we pray that the love that was there when they said, I do, will carry them each and every day of their lives. From now and from the day that they take their last breath and join you in eternity, for with the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Are there any announcements this morning? Here we go. It's mostly in your bulletin, but uh, just to remind you, we're going back to Billy's ice cream on the 17th. I thought it was this week, but I'm having trouble keeping the week straight in <laughs> some of these things. Um, and then on the 19th of the same week, you know, if you don't get enough of each other, um, Lumpy Fellowship has invited us all to join them in the uh, park in the square in Kingsville for the polka contest. So, you know, we can get a little wild and crazy and dance if we want to. <laughs> And pay attention to this. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I might add, it's actually just a polka concert. It's a Chardon polka band that we'll be playing. Right. We'll meet about 545 by the statue across from the Methodist Church. And then we'll decide, bring your lawn chair, and we'll decide where we want to sit. If we want to be in front and poke at you, or just in the back. We can start Ms. practicing right now. <laughs> and Patty. Would that be the same statue that Miss Amy is going to inform all you babies that have lived in Painesville your entire life and don't know what the Lincoln Stone is? Yes, so, she could. Yes, Amy's going to tell us a whole history of it. Oh, I don't Sounds good. I just wanted to add real quick that uh, we will still be taking. 
uh, your photograph if you haven't had your picture taken for the photo album for our parish photo album that we would like to present to Mother Rachel when she comes in a few weeks. So please come downstairs and we have a bio sheet. We'd like to have you update and so forth. So uh, if, you, if you haven't done it, please do it this week. Next week will be our last time to get that. So we still have time to compile it. And um, make sure you join us on the 30th for a Strawberry Social for a, a good welcome here for uh, Mother Rachel. And again, we thank you uh, for being with us. We, Thank you. My sisters and my brothers, life is short. We do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those around us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of the one who made us, who loves us, and who travels away with us be upon you and those you love dearly, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God.